No, it, it goes, it goes, it goes to me. I, I, I am, I am a, a, a fan of common sense and, and, and I'm a lover of, of people and our people in particular. Um, you know, in, in, it just always fascinates me when we see these stars and, and, and you think that, um, you know, they just happen to turn up in the media every five minutes. No, that that's planned. It's plotted. It's contrived. It is. Um, but let's switch subjects. We, 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 we talked about the greats. Um, in this conversation, I, I, we would be remiss if we didn't mention Mr. Chris Rock. Did, did, did you get the chance to see his comedy special? I did. I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, full disclosure, I'm another, I'm a big Chris Rock fan. So uh, I think it was part of course. Uh, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I was surprised at the pushback that it, it, it received from, from all people, from black people, from white people. I, I have to admit, I was a little surprised. Uh, he, he received a lot of pushback, you know. When you say pushback, uh, what do you mean? Be specific. Uh, mixed reviews of people who were offended, people who didn't like it. Uh, you know, when he did Bigger and Blacker, uh, when, he, when he, his other comedy specials to me were met with some controversy, but even the controversy they were met with was still positive. You know what I mean? Where people say, oh man, he, he, he you know, he said this, but people liked it. I was just shocked that uh, this one didn't hit as hard as I thought with everybody. That's what I thought. You know, me, me and you, we spoke earlier about woke culture. We spoke earlier about being politically correct. Uh, and we also spoke about comedians specifically um, being shackled, um, not being able to speak truth for fear of being canceled. Um, before I give my thoughts, I, I, Dave Chappelle is here and Chris Rock is right here. Like, like, and it used to be the other way. Chris Rock was my favorite comedian outside of, of back in the days, Eddie Murphy, and especially when it comes to stand up um, specifically. But with that being said, I, I didn't find this thing that's funny, um, as a normal Chris Rock special. I thought that Chris Rock, you know, and, and I'll give my thoughts and then I want to ask you a question. I thought Chris Rock didn't go in in certain areas. And it almost felt as though he was thinking, how far can I push this envelope for fear of backlash? Now, that's just what Sean took from it. But even a comedian on his level, I felt like the timing was off with some of his jokes. I felt like I saw the jokes coming. And I also felt, whereas Chris Rock of old would have went in, this Chris Rock was very conscious of the world that we live in. And because of that, his jokes didn't feel as authentic as they felt in the past. And, and, and that and for that reason, I didn't think it was as funny as bigger and blacker. Um, and I also think, let's just call it what it is. You, 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 when, when, when the legends perform, you go to their shows. I, I, I'm not interested in, in going to a Mary J. Blige concert and Mary giving me new music. I, give me what's the 411. Give give me them classics that 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 I know and love you for. People went to that. People tuned in to that special because they wanted to hear his thoughts on Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, and he gave seven minutes out of an hour and fifteen minutes to that topic. And I feel like people felt, come on, man, you know why we are here. We love you as a comedian, but we came for a specific reason. And instead of just giving us our money's worth on why we came in the first place, at the end of the show, 
you gave us a sprinkle. And I think that was a letdown. And I'm just talking as a fan. Well, a lot to unpack here. First of all, in my opinion, you know, and I, I like using analogies. Chris Rock has a body of work to compare his new work to. And that's always hard. It's always hard to compare a sequel to the original. So he was under that microscope because his body of work and his previous specials have been so good, they're gonna be hard to top. So I didn't go into his this special with that lens of, man, this is what he's done. Let me see what he's coming with. And you know, to that point, it's, it's so, and I don't wanna make a sweeping indictment because I don't mm -hmm. want to be accused of that. But I do want to say this. I, I work in front of Black people, Black audience, Black and Latino audience most of the time. And we have a different barometer. We have a different measure of what we like and how we judge. And it's more critical and it's more, you know, and I, I say this on stage, man, Black people, you know, and, and, and when, when I perform a lot of times, they come to the show, they got problems just as worse as yours. So, yo, you better make me laugh. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I just paid $30 to see you up in there, man. You better give me my thing. And that's the mentality. You like, yo, uh, we you got slapped. You better give us the goods on. And that's the mentality. Yeah, white people generally come, hey, we just hope it's gonna be a great show. You know, but we come with a chip on our shoulder. And I think you have to take in consideration is that. Chris Rock had a show that he was doing. Before that slap, he was gonna do this special. So he was working on that show. He was in the process of that. And then the slap happened. So, you know, you wanna talk about people sticking to their guns and doing what he wasn't gonna abandon everything that he had worked months and months and months to achieve just to talk about that slap. And here I wanna get a little personal with you. And right. you, know, you and I talked about this beforehand and we said that we weren't gonna go you know, heavy into this because of things that I'm doing uh, with this. But I'm in a similar situation with Chris. I mean, I had that whole Jamie Foxx thing happen, that whole roast thing happen. It happens to you, you know, and, I'm, I'm, and, and, and it's comparable to what happened with Chris Rock. You don't want to take something that happened that in, in, in initially, because with that thing with me and Jamie, and that's a negative thing in his mind, man. That was something... That was, he made good of it. He smiled. He said, oh man, you know, but you have to realize he was hurt by that, man. He was hurt the same way I was hurt. He was hurt by that. So you're not going to make your whole special. And this is, and, and this is what I try to tell black people and brown people in particular, when you come see a comedian, when you, when you watch us perform, stop coming to see us with all of those, uh, pre-notions before the show. Come and enjoy what you see. Because when you have a preconceived notion of what you want from a person, be it if you go out on a date with a girl and in your mind, you're like, man, I'm gonna hit this ass. You know, we're going to this restaurant, we're doing this, I better hit this ass. That automatically keeps you from having the, the best time that you can have because if it doesn't end with that, you're disappointed. So I use that to say, when you, I, I didn't go into his special saying, man, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, talk about this, Jamie. I mean, um, come on, talk about this, this Will Smith thing. So I think that he was handicapped to a degree by that. But I, I would just caution everybody, as comedians, most of our comedy comes from pain. You know, things that bother us, isn't it? It's not until we're able to laugh at those things that we can turn it into a diamond. You understand? Recently, with the whole Jamie Foxx thing, man, I kept that under the wraps for so long, man, it bothered me. But my wife and my kids, they saw it and they started to make fun of it. My kids went and told their friends, they watched it. And my wife sat me down and said, hey, you gotta get past that, man. It happened, it's over. You got to see the humor in it. And I just recently, within the last three or four years, got to the point where I could watch that, you know, that I can talk about it, it's funny. I'm doing a documentary on it now, you understand? But I could have never done that until I got past it. So we don't know, like you said with, with, uh, with uh, Dave Chappelle, we don't know where he is with that, within himself. You understand what I'm saying? Who are we talking, Chris Rock? Chris Rock, Chris Rock. Okay. We don't know where he is with that. We do know, I know he said to himself, hey, I gotta address this because it's the elephant in the room. 
But to go into grave detail and to give more, we don't know if, if, if in his heart, that's where he really is. And in order, I know this, and I'll, I'll end it with this, as a comedian, in order to fully extrapolate everything from something to make it completely hysterical, you have to feel that way yourself. So, you know, I, I, I'll say that on Chris, on Chris Rock's behalf. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.